put it in a dead box. Alright. We'll see if this works. I kind of doubt it. I'm curious to see if it works. I think it actually might. It might have been there in the room a little bit. Alright, I'm fine with it. What the hell? I think I got it. How do you do that? What happened? Well, put it in reverse. Why the hell put it in reverse, Cameron? I put it slightly in reverse so it wouldn't go forward. Just take two pieces of tracks and nail them like this. There you go. Yeah, so, uh, it's, it's because a lot of people don't like Halloween. So they want to stay away from the spiders. <laughs> yeah. That's one hell of a rugged. No, a wheelchair. Ah, <laughs> uh, he got stuck. Well, hi, uh, I'm Gary Raymond, member of LA Live Steamers, and um, I built a model. It was inspired by the Nautilus in the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a Jules Verne movie that Disney did in the 50s. And uh, basically, I was wondering what 
What if Captain Nemo would build an armored rail car to get around on land? It's never been done. They've never done any movies about it or anything else. So I happened to be in some tank clubs at the time, and we were all doing 1 16th scale tanks, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to use some, uh, these were Tamiya tanks, 1 16th scale. These are King Tigers, actually, and I thought, well, it'd be kind of cool to use those um, for the automated parts, and then I'll build the rest. So um, I got some drawings from the Nautilus from the movie, and uh, they actually did have a 16th inch scale model they used for the underwater scenes but the submarine's 170 feet long so this the three-quarter inch scale 1 16th scale model was 11 feet long i thought well it's too long to be practical for a railroad object so i kind of selectively compressed it the idea was to keep the the most distinctive parts of the uh, nautilus and then you know add the parts that would be appropriate for an armored rail car so it's six feet which fits in my van and it's still a work in progress. It's not done yet um, because it's scratch built, it's all bulkheads, everything's, you know, wasn't, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, it takes longer. Still have to do a lot of rivets on it and everything else. But basically, uh, like I said, it's uh, what if he had needed something to get around on land? So um, it has two operating turrets, uh, they rotate, guns elevate, they have simulated fire with strobes has the original, to me, had the original sounds of the en- of the engine. Uh, evidently, it was a King Tiger in France that was restored, and they actually, to me, I went over and recorded that. So that's in the model. So we have, and I have the two tanks running off of one transmitter, which, of course, I've never seen done because you wouldn't normally do that. So it's kind of fun because the sound of the engines kind of phase in and out, kind of like probably early diesels before they had really good electronic uh, control. And... Um, Let's see what else. Oh, Jack Sessoms did the trucks for me. He was uh, an amazing model builder. He used to do all uh, movie miniatures, any movie that had miniature railroads in it. You know, they were looked full size, but they were for, you know, crashes or high-speed things or whatever. But anyway, he did the trucks. I used the Tamiya tanks and then built everything else from scratch. Um, it's a decagon. The, the fuselage deck is a decagon, 10-sided. All the panels were actual, are actually cut because none of them are the same shape. So that's one of the reasons it's made out of styrene, 40,000 styrene. But I felt if, I'd, if I'd known when I started this, I'd never done you know, a scratch built project like this. I would have probably done it out of resin and molded it, which in the long run would have been faster. But anyway, so they're all bulkheads in there, acrylic plastic, quarter inch acrylic. And uh, like I said, each panel is cut with a paper cutter. And that's why I use 40,000s because you can cut them on a paper cutter and get a clean cut and each one's glued separately and uh, let's see uh, the power is actually comes from the top uh, tank chassis through the top drive sprocket goes through the tracks because I want to retain the tracks I always love tracks and it goes to the bottom which is an idler sprocket and then that goes to the uh, trucks that power it on the rail so that's pretty much it
I can't believe it. it's gonna be crazy. I'm gonna be in Japan and my brother's gonna be in Britain. So we're Oh my hair looks good. 